Welcome to an amazing football weekend for these two states. Monday night football, Pitts, Wisconsin against Minnesota. And in the longest running rivalry in college football, they play for Paul Bunyan's Axe today as Wisconsin meets Minnesota. I'm Bob Bushus and alongside Bob Greasy and Chris Spielman and Big Ten football like it ought to be for two guys that played their football in the Big Ten. We're not inside at the Metrodome anymore. We're outside 45 degrees and rainy. Well, you know, the, it's, this is the way you expect it to be in October, November in the Big Ten. Both quarterbacks are going to have to adjust a little bit to throwing the football, but it's good football weather. Minnesota won the toss, elected not to defer. They want their offense to start with the ball. Philip Welch is set to kick off the 119th all-time meeting between these two teams. They met for the first time in 1890, and they play for Paul Bunyan's axe. Troy Stoudemire out to the 20-yard line and more. He's got a convoy down the sideline. Great field position to begin with a flag down for Minnesota. We'll have to check the penalty. It's right at midfield. During return, holding number 20 of the returning team. 10 yards, first down. So a good field position, but not quite as good as it should have been. The opening kickoff. Watch number 20 right there ahead of him. Didn't look like. Uh, <laughs> Come on now. Not, not much, but maybe. Let him go. They're a lot closer than we are. Still pretty good starting field position for the Golden Gophers at their own 37 yard line. Right to the air goes Adam Weber. A dump off to Dewan Bennett. And he's right back where Stoudemire was with the kickoff return a minute ago. An 11 yard gain and a first down. Adam Weber, who has been tremendous so far for Minnesota. 879 yards, and the touchdowns and interceptions a little misleading with a couple of picks thrown late in their last game. And there's his backup, the backup quarterback, Marquise Gray. He's a true freshman. He is a master of the Wildcat offense. Gets in in the second play of the ball game. Don't forget, he's yet to throw a pass this year. I wouldn't be surprised if this is his first attempt. A handoff and a throw from the wide receiver, nothing doing. And the ball pops out. Whistles on the field, blow the play dead. So it's not a turnover, but boy, did Jay Valai come up and immediately make a hit along with a Brian Schofield for Wisconsin. Well, Brian Schofield is a pure pass rusher. You see right there, not fooled at all. Works his hand and comes in and gets a good secure tackle on Marquise Gray. But Schofield's a guy you want to run at. You don't want to pass to his side because of his pass rushing ability. And that, that looks like a fumble to me. Ball was close to, to coming out before he hit the ground. So Weber right back in. Second down and long. A draw. Plenty of running room for Bennett. And he loses the football. And it's recovered by the Badgers. Evan Smith has the recovery. Let's take a look. Draw is a nice play. Look at the gaping holes in that defense. Marigos and Valai. Smith gets on it. Wisconsin has gotten a lot of turnovers this year. That ball comes out clearly. They're 11th in the nation in getting takeaways is Wisconsin. We've That's played 90 seconds, already have four big plays to yes. start this game off. Yes. Zach Brown starts as the eye back for Wisconsin. We'll see a lot of John Clay. An underneath throw to Garrett Graham, the tight end, for a couple of yard game. And let's see who's winging it. Brought to you by Wing Street. And this season, Scott Tolzien has been winging it for Wisconsin. The thing I like about him, he's a young guy that spreads the football around. When you have a quarterback that hits all his targets, it puts a lot of pressure on defenses, and they have two very active tight ends, which obviously helps your edge players in Al Toon and Isaac Anderson. Hand off to Brown. 
And he's brought down about four yards shy of a first down. Bob Greasy, how about Wisconsin's impact players? Well, Tolzien, the quarterback, is the first guy. He's the number one rated passer in the Big Ten. He's on a roll. Seven touchdowns, no interceptions, three games. Graham is the next guy. Three touchdown catches last year. He's a playmaker at tight end. And Schofield, you've already seen him. He's an ex-linebacker. He's a captain and leader. He's a nightmare for opposing quarterbacks. Third down and five. The blitz picked up. Tolzien underneath. What a catch thrown behind him. And Garrett Graham, great concentration to hold on for the first down. Up at the top of your screen, you'll see Wisconsin's starting offense and Garrett Graham with three touchdown catches against Michigan State. A big third down conversion. Yeah, that's, that's what makes Garrett Graham so dangerous is because it's tough to match up. He's too big for safety and he's a good route runner, so that puts a lot of pressure on linebackers that aren't used to playing man to man. That time, Garrett Graham was working Simone Lawrence on a read option route. Good read by both guys and an excellent catch. One hander. Again, the blitz picked up. Tolzien down the sideline. Has Graham again. Another first down. Scott Tolzien has been outstanding. As we mentioned, he is the number one passer in the uh, Big Ten. Here's a look at Graham inside release. And the ball is thrown to the outside over uh, the linebacker. Just a good throw. You know what would help, Bob, is if they jam him at the line of scrimmage. You and I sit there and watch film and talk about it every <laughs> single week. If you got a pass catcher, jam his rand up at the line of scrimmage. Don't especially, get that free release. Especially a tight end. Guy is close to the line of scrimmage. Tolzien will throw it again. On the move. Oh, boy, did he take on <laughs> The safety, Kim Royston there, and I'm not sure who got the better of it. I could just see Bielema and Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator, just cringe yeah. when their quarterback goes out there right next to the sideline and takes on one of these defensive guys. Well, he's taking on Kim Royston, a transfer from Wisconsin. Now look at Royston's reaction. He's going to stern and he's going to start talking and telling everybody how tough he is and how he should have stayed at Wisconsin. But he got into a little jawing match over there after the hit. That was a good, solid tackle. Tolzien, out of bounds, or take a knee. You're too important in this football team. Second down and 10. Zach Brown with a first down and more. All the way down to the 20-yard line, and Royston may have saved a touchdown. Minnesota starting defense up at the top of your screen, but that's 15 yards for Zach Brown. Zach Brown is the guy that's getting in the start despite that John Clay had 140-plus last week. And it's amazing that what competition brings out in people. If you're fighting for carries, if your guy has a 142 one week, you tend to run the ball a little bit harder. Now here's John Clay now as the eye back, as these two have already shared this opening drive. Clay's first carry. That's a hard working six, seven, maybe eight yards. Well, one problem with that, and that's good blocking up front and all that, but when I see a running back carry a linebacker without extra bodies or maroon helmets coming to rat a tat tat him, that's a problem. Because your defensive guys, you got to be hustling to the football. If you've got a guy held up, the second, third, fourth man in has to come in and start raking the ball and putting a helmet on somebody. Hard to be better than Wisconsin has been in the red zone. They're 100% in terms of scoring, but 16 possessions, 14 touchdowns. That ranks them first in the nation inside the 20. Quick hitch, Nick Toon. He's inside the five. It's first and goal at about the two. Simone Lawrence made the stop for Minnesota. It's, Wisconsin has always been known as a, as a tough, physical, power football team, offensively especially. And, and, and now they've got all these weapons. You've got Graham and Kendricks. You've got Toon on the outside, Anderson on the outside. And I was kidding the other day with Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator. I said, Tolzien's playing as well as any quarterback you've had lately. What happened to the running game? He just laughed. Play gets the carry, bounces it outside. Touchdown, Badgers. Fifth rushing touchdown of the season already for John Clay. Well, what happens is Wisconsin and Paul Chris, they're smart. They understand in today's game, we always hear run to throw. This team throws to run. 
And when you're efficient like that, that's a problem for Minnesota's defense. And John Clay showing great vision, not hitting it up inside, but using his big speed at 248 to get the corner and the edge. So the fumble by Dewan Bennett gave Wisconsin great field position. Tolzien was four for four on the opening drive, and it's seven nothing Badgers. Well, you're on the road, first time on the road. You know, Minnesota fumbles the ball. Wisconsin picks it up, takes it down the road, says, if you're going to help it, we'll take advantage of it. Thank you. Five touchdown runs for John Clay. He is atop the Big Ten in touchdown runs early in this season. The first Big Ten play game played in this building for Minnesota, but it's Wisconsin that strikes first. Troy Stoudemire had a great kickoff return to open the game, but the Gophers turned it over at midfield. He'll try again, and again he's got room. Good return all the way out to the 33-yard line. Minnesota starters on offense at the top of the screen. They're trying to stay on the field for a few more plays. Third down and 19. Three-man rush. Wide receiver screen to Hayo Carpenter. And he's got the first down all the way out to midfield. Third and 19 of the Golden Gophers are able to convert. I like the call by Jed Fish, the offensive coordinator. Third and really long. It's a safe pass to a guy that's got the most speed. This kid was the number one Juco guy coming out of Juco Junior College this year. He had like 93 receptions and 16 touchdowns last year in junior college. He's going to get it from his boys, though. You had Niz Egwu, the defensive line, him run him down from behind. <laughs> He's going to hear that from the boys now. <laughs> Play action for Weber. All kinds of time. Works the middle. Decker can't come down with it. And that's rare for him to get two hands of the football and not make the catch even in traffic. Comer St. Jean does a good job of playing the football, keeping his eyes on the target as opposed to going for the knockout hit. He comes in there with his right arm and clubs across the arm to knock the ball out. I thought Weber was just a tad late. I was watching Decker and Iso on it. He was open. He was just a tad late delivering that football, allowing the linebackers to close the distance. And it was a little bit high. But if you want to, if you've never seen Minnesota or Eric Decker, he's going to get the ball a lot today. This time underneath. And Decker makes the catch, picks up five. Brought down by Blake Sorensen, so a big third down upcoming for Minnesota. Decker came into this game with 212 career receptions and 23 touchdowns. He's an excellent athlete. He's a baseball player. He can throw the football. He's a left-hander, so got all kinds of things well, this is our second Minnesota game of the year and he's already thrown a couple passes got him the man coverage right here the blitz pick up Decker works the middle of the field and has a first down takes a hard hit and is able to convert and this isn't the only big hit we've seen Decker take this year he takes a shot right there versus Cal got Got a little blood on the chin, but he held on to the football. It's like a hockey player. Stitch him up, he'll be good. But last time they had man coverage out on the, in the slot receiver position. And believe me, if you're a man on him, he's tough duty, especially in the slot because he has all kind of field to work with. And he beat Devin Smith on the inside. Now Decker shifts from tight end into the slot. And they pitch and run it that way with Kevin Whaley. He's a speedster. Gets to the edge. And picks up nine yards. Fresh off another legendary win. Brett Favre is determined to take down his old team in Green Bay. What an epic battle. It will be Monday night. ESPN's Monday Night Football. Packers, Vikings at 8.30 Eastern. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown. Served by Applebee's at 7 Eastern. That's just down the street from here, isn't it? You can just see the roof of the Metrodome over the top of the buildings here in a lot Minnesota. Of stuff going on in this town this weekend. This is the best move Minnesota ever made, though. Building an outdoor facility on campus. What a terrific college football stadium. Second down and two. 
An end around. Minnesota reads it well, but they cannot make the tackle. Eric Lair, the tight end, picks up a first down inside the 15. It's Jed Fish's job to create offense for this team. They're trying to turn into a running football team. Well, how do you turn into a running football team? Have a lot of different runs and get athletes to football. Be creative right there. Eric Blair, who's not a big part of that offense, but a good athlete. Give him the ball, let him do something. That should have been a six, seven, eight yard loss. Yeah, they were well defended. And, and Lair made a, a great play to get back to the line of, to the line of scrimmage and pick up a first down. Ed Fisk, the awesome offensive coordinator for Minnesota, only 33 years old, but an innovative play caller. Eskridge breaks the tackle at the 10, grinds his way down to about the 8. Tim Brewster in his third year at Minnesota trying to continue the reclamation project since taking over this program. Last year they began the year seven and one and looked like they were going to author one of the great turnarounds in college football off a one and eleven year his first season. But then they lost their last five games including the bowl game. And a lot of that has to do with scheduling and also your, your Big Ten opponents some of the easier ones were at the front of the schedule. Tenth play of the drive. They throw a hitch to the near side to Brandon Green, and he loses a few. The four wide receivers, or four offensive players, were lined up to the wide side of the field, and uh, good coverage by Wisconsin. Well, what happened was the four guys forgot to move when the ball was snapped. <laughs> Didn't block anybody. You got you, uh, yeah, when the ball's actually snapped, you go and move, and I think sometimes <laughs> you tend to out-trick yourself. And they've been running the ball with the base formation on second and five. I think you want to give your guys some confidence and start pounding that line of scrimmage. They're getting five and six yards a pop. I don't think you need to get fancy right down there. Got a little posse there lined up. Weber goes that way, a low throw and a drop. Looking for Nick Tal Arnett, the tight end. So it will be fourth down and a field goal chance from mid range for Minnesota. It's a critical play right there. I mean, you've got to make that play. Receiver was wide open. You had him just, just the way you wanted him. You got to hit that. The tower net was kind of pulling away. The throw wasn't exactly perfect. I think he was throwing it to the safe side just in case, but you got to hit that one. A workable ball. Eric Ellistad is five for six so far this season. Make it six for seven, and the Golden Gophers are on the board. Wisconsin with a 7-3 lead in the battle for Paul Bunyan's axe. Wisconsin's won it the last five years in a row. Minnesota wants it back. That is not the most low-cal meal <laughs> that you can find here in Minnesota, but that's my kind of buffet. 7-3, Wisconsin has the lead in the battle for Paul Bunyan's axe. Bob Wischusen alongside Chris Spielman and Bob Greasy. Minnesota's Eric Elstad to kick off to at least so far the most dangerous kick return man in the Big Ten. David Gilbert is back deep to receive for Wisconsin. Kick angles towards the sideline and Gilbert lets it bounce into the end zone. That's the perfect kick for Elstad. It'll be first and ten for Wisconsin. Wisconsin at 4-0 to start off the season. Their first pure road game of the year. First and ten at their own 20 yard line. To the ground in its play. Nine yard gain on first down. Second down and one. Colzine intercepted. Picked off by Nate Triple. He's down the sideline. Inside the 15 yard line. Here's Triplett here. You're going to have a man on the outside blitz. He's just going to come right over to our right side. Tozine looks that way the whole time. You just have to pick up that inside linebacker if you're throwing the ball to the inside. In effect, also if you're running the slant to the field, Bob, there's not a lot of room that the linebacker has to cover, and you don't have a lot of room to run the slant. He's got to use his vision, the quarterback, to look off, then come back to it. Great that read by... It's Cozine's first interception in like uh, 82 throws. First and 10 at the 11. Leon Eskridge barely gets back to the 11. 
missed the hole. They missed the hole. The hole was on the left side, and they had room to work with. He got a little bit too impatient on the cutback run. And when you're rolling backs, that's a problem sometimes because the guys don't have the vision. Watch the hole open up on your left-hand side. You're going to see right there is your hole, and he made a decision to cut it back right away. Stay patient. Trust what you're doing up front as a running back. The patience, and Bob Greasy talks about all the time, is a virtue as a running back. On second down, a fade into the end zone for Becker. He's got it. Touchdown, Golden Gophers. When executed, the fade stop is a fair to stop, isn't it, Grease? Put your best guy out there on their guy and just give him a chance to make a play. Fifth touchdown catch for Eric Decker, and Minnesota has the lead. Here's what I'm talking about, the execution. Henry, good, but I, let me throw it to the back shoulder and have trust in Decker. And the axe. Each team scores a touchdown off the other's turnover. And Minnesota has the lead on the Eric Decker touchdown pass from Adam Weber. And I think somebody wants to get his hands finally on Paul Bunyan's axe. <laughs> they know what this is all about. The Minnesota kid grew up here understanding what it means. They read from the two. And he's tripped up at the 22. Once again, it's Zach Brown in as the eye back. A quick kicks to Nick Toon. And he has a first down out close to the 34 yard line. Lee Campbell made the stop. Now, Minnesota plays a lot of rivalry games, and they've got a lot of trophies that they could possibly win. The little brown jug, well, there's nothing in that trophy case. There's nothing in any of the four big trophy yeah, cases. So. You got the, the Florida Rosedale, the pig. The victory bell and of course the axe vacant occupancy available well, that last trophy case is where the axe would go if Minnesota can win today Tolzien slings one once again it's two and he picks only a couple of yards up the last time Minnesota won any of their trophy games back in 2003 was the last time they had Paul Bunyan's axe Last beat Penn State in 2004, Michigan in 2005. Floyd of Rosedale was the last trophy they had their hands on. And who plays more trophy games than Minnesota? Four, they play four trophy games. Purdue and I, was we, we, we play one. We play for the old Oak and Bucket. Brown cuts back. And it's about a yard and a half shy of a first down. Again, Kim Royston, the transfer from Wisconsin, came up to tackle one of his old teammates. I'll tell you, Mickey Turner, man. Mickey Turner's coming to play because right there he put Triplett, who made the big play, right on his back, allowing for Brown to get that edge. <laughs> About as action-packed a first quarter as we ever could have imagined. Paul Bunyan's axe hangs in the balance. Minnesota by a field goal. Set for the start of the second quarter. Minnesota with a three-point lead over Wisconsin here at UM. First downs, total yards, dead even so far. Each team with five first downs. Each team with 89 total yards. Each team with one turnover, resulting in a touchdown for the other. And a big third down and one to start off the second quarter. John Clay is able to spin, move the pile, and pick up the first down. Watch all this. There may be some movement here. Maybe not. No, not this time on offense. Ooh. Boy, Clay gets racked up after a gain of a yard, maybe two. Simone Lawrence and Lee Campbell combine on the stop, so it will be third down and six. The strength of this Minnesota team are those two inside tackles and that linebacking core of Triplett, Campbell, and Lawrence. And just to go on that point, linebackers are only as good as the guys in front of them. 
And Brown and Small are outstanding in eating up blockers. Yeah, they are big and bad, those two inside tackles. Four-man rush on third down. Tolzien fires it over the middle and has a completion. Maurice Moore has a first down inside the 30-yard line. It's a better job of Tolzien right there looking one place than coming back to another, Grease. Well, he wanted to throw it to the left, and his man was covered, and the out, watch him. He's looking to our right. He wants to go that way. Now my outlet is Moore just coming across, flat across the line of scrimmage. Gives it to him, and he picks up a first down. Good play. Working on a redshirt freshman, Keenan Cooper, who let him inside take away that throwing lane. Here's a true freshman, Monty Ball, going up the middle for a couple of yards. A player they were thinking about redshirting, but have decided not to redshirt, so he gets the call today. You know, and I was talking to some Wisconsin people before the game. They go back and forth with this, but Brett Bielema has a philosophy. He likes to bank those red shirts just in case in the future somebody would get injured or not. And if Ball shows the ability that he can help this offense, let him play now. And then we have a red shirt year if we possibly need it down the line in the future. It's the true freshman again on second and eight tripped up at the line but falls forward for a gain of about three. So it sets up another big third down. Chris, you were talking about Bonnie Ball. I, would, I just saw uh, Paul Chris just before the game down the hallway, and he, he told me that they were going to get this kid in, and they were going to get him in the ball game early, Bonnie Ball. I said, well, what, is, what does he do that the other two guys can't do? Zach Brown and... Uh, and uh, and, and, and uh, John Clay. John Clay. I said, what does he do? He said, he's just special. He's just special. He gives us something special. Third and five. Minnesota shows blitz. Eight players up near the line. Here they come. And the blitz works. Tolzien has to throw off his back foot. Doesn't come close to his receiver. It was Lee Campbell that made the hit. Well, he had Graham open in the flat, but that's the product of the blitz. If you come on the counter, right here's Campbell coming right up the middle, untouched forces a bad throw and it helps your coverage out. The best pass coverage is an outstanding pass rush and that was what's created by the blitz by the Gophers. 39 yard field goal attempt for Philip Welch. He's four for seven this year. Missed most of his kicks early though this season to tie the game. And that one is right down the middle. Lee Campbell last year led this defense with 80 tackles. His pressure forces the field goal attempt and we're tied. College football presented by Cars.com, a 10-10 tie between Wisconsin and Minnesota. And the last thing that Minnesota needed was some off-the-field distractions this past week, but they had to deal with exactly that. Stoudemire from the goal line. Has a lane to the 20. A flag down as he gets to the 30. Still inbounds to midfield, but this might be coming back. Well, it is a great college football atmosphere and they want Paul Bunyan's axe back after a five year absence the Golden Gophers at home in their brand new stadium a new possession and plenty of running room for DeLeon Eskridge out across the 35 yard line. As we all right, Reese, we're midway through the second quarter here in Minneapolis. And the oldest rivalry in college football, the 119th meeting between these two schools tied at 10. Weber down the sideline again for Decker. This time he makes the adjustment. First down at the 30-yard line of Wisconsin, working on Devin Smith. This is just man on man. You've put your, your best receiver to the wide side of the field. Decker is 6'3", 220 pounds. Smith is 5'11", 185. So you got a bigger guy seeing the ball, making a play on the ball. You can do that all day, Chris. There's something to say about trust. You can see the trust that Decker oh, yeah. and Weber have. That's I'll throw the sure. ball up. I know my oh, guy's going to come down. Or I'm sure least, you had a guy you or, trusted. Oh, yeah, or at least he's going to not let the other guy catch up. Yep. Picks up four yards down to the 25-yard line. And Weber for Decker again. Incomplete. 
Well, I tell you, he, he that one he forced a little bit. He had Hazy open, his fullback in the flat. It was a cover too, but the, the corner on that side, Devin Smith isn't even honoring the flat call. He's going right to Decker, so he's got to be patient. When you see the corner back off, go ahead and dump it to the flat and take seven as opposed to trying to force one in for 20. You trying to think like a quarterback now? I dangerous. used to play quarterback. He'd be dangerous <laughs> back there. <laughs> There's Decker in motion to work him. They love him in the red zone. Facing third and nine. The in cut by Stoudemire, and he's inside the two. First and goal for the Golden Gophers. I like that a lot. Jed Fish, seven of the first 12 passes that Decker has, uh, that uh, Weber has thrown have gone to Decker. This time he puts Decker in motion, highlights him out there, and all the defensive guys see him moving around, and then he throws to a wide open Stoudemire on a slant to the one yard line. And that's good patience for Weber to expand his vision to find somebody else besides number seven and Eric Decker. Eskridge is the eye back on first and goal. That's Decker in motion. The fade again to Decker. And that one's going way over his head. And you see Weber right there patting his chest. He needed to put that one on the loop because you had Aaron Henry giving space to Decker. So you put that on a rope. And he tried to lob it to the backside shoulder. If he puts it on a rope. Play. Illegal chop block. Number 68 offense. 15 yards. Repeat the down. First down. Now that's Chris Bunders. That's the same left guard that was called for the false start that set up third and nine. They convert. But now first and goal at the one becomes first and goal back at the 16. And this is a killer. Yeah. I mean, you're at the one yard line ready to go in. And the chop block is defined by when a player is engaged. Then a second player comes in and cuts. Now that's a bad call. Because the center was trying to get off onto the next level. He wasn't actually blocking the nose. Well, that call really hurts Minnesota. Now it's first and goal from the 16 yard line. And Decker gets some of those yards back down to about the five. Kevin Smith makes the stop. Let's go back, take another look at the penalty on Bunders. Right here, number 68, the left guard. The rule is the center and the guard cannot block the same guy high and low at the same time. Now, I know what you're saying, Chris. The center tried to get through and off of him, but he was still contacting him high, and the left guard went at him low. And, then, you know, that's the way the rule is written. Yeah, it, it is written that it's way. It's a good call. And it's tough to discern. The tower net, we had one arm loose trying to run to the linebacker. Second and goal. A dive to the fullback up the middle. And it's Hazy that gets inside the five. They will mark him down at the four yard line where it will be third down and goal. Mike Taylor, a redshirt freshman that plays the strong side for Wisconsin, made the stop. Now it'll be interesting to see what they do. You can isolate Decker one on one with the corner. And you can take your chances. And everybody in the bank here is probably saying, well, throw it to Decker. Now we'll see what Wisconsin does to, to counter that. But if you want to get Decker out in space, watch his split. He's up to the right side up here. Watch where his split is. Now he's out pretty wide right there. So he's probably going to try to work inside or they'll run the fade to him again. They got two guys over him. Look at the two defenders right there. Weber has to improvise. To the corner, sliding out of bounds was Brandon Green. So the penalty backs up Minnesota and they can't fight their way back into the end zone and ends up being a short field goal attempt. Well Minnesota has had six penalties for 60 yards and this is what stops them on this drive. As you call it Chris Decker was double covered on the other side so he had to come back and throw it to one of the other guys. Alistad a chip shot from 21 yards away and it gives Minnesota the lead. So the crowd doesn't love the play calling, but their team has the lead at the break. Minnesota by three. Now let's join Reese Davis for the Bud Light Halftime Report. Reese. An action-packed first half, 13 to 10, Minnesota leads over Wisconsin in the longest standing rivalry in college football, the 119th time these two teams have met. Bob Schusen here with Bob Greasy and Chris Spielman. Turnovers 
and early on penalties later in the first half really told the story and Minnesota boy did they hurt themselves with penalties uh, especially there late in the first half when they're on the one yard line and they throw a pass and they get a, a chop block call and it was an, it was a fair call they had two guys hitting the same guy high and low but the penalties have really hurt Minnesota not so much Wisconsin well I wanted to see how Wisconsin would respond on the road four and hold home they have their new quarterback in. They've come in. He's played pretty well. He made a poor decision where Triplett read his eyes, picked off the slant, and put Minnesota in scoring position. But overall, I look at Wisconsin's performance. Outstanding on the road for the first time. In clement weather for the first time, they responded to the challenger in this ball game. And really, it's going to go be a fourth quarter game. It seems like all Golden Gopher games are four quarter games. <laughs> and the axe has made an appearance. <laughs> Minnesota on one side, Wisconsin on the other. It stays in the locker room until the start of the second half, but then it goes behind the bench of the team that holds it from last year. And it will be Wisconsin that will start the second half with the football. Gil Reed will bring it out to the 20. A flag down as he's brought down at the 29 yard line. Quick swing pass to the near side. Nick Toon. Again close to a first down. Nine more yards. That's the third time they've run that play, Bob. Do I hear do I hear a, a, a small sound <laughs> like Toon? No tune? question. I mean, we're in Minnesota. There's there are a few red jerseys in the uh, stands. We can see uh, a, a few. And, you know, used to be when this game was played in the Metrodome, there used to be like 15 to 20,000. Wisconsin fans that would make it over for this game. This was the toughest ticket for a Wisconsin fan to get. That's what uh, Be Bert Brett Bielema was telling us uh, yesterday. Colzine escapes the pressure, fumbles the football, lost it, and it's recovered by Nate Triplett for Minnesota. He wasn't hit, he just fumbled it out. The key for Wisconsin the first four ball games was the consistent play of Scott Tolzien. Here today, he has thrown an interception which led to a touchdown. Now he just, just drops the football. You got to have good quarterback play when you go on the road. On four stairs. That's something that Tolzien has not done. Now the key is what does Minnesota do? How do they respond to great field position? A lot of times when you get a play like this, if I'm Dave Dorn, the defensive coordinator, alert to big play, alert to big pass. First down and plus territory after the turnover for Minnesota. Weber might have changed the play at the line. Quick strike to the near side over the head of Brandon Green. Now last year Minnesota was 11th in the nation in takeaways. They took the ball away 31 times last season. Triplett has two takeaways today but through their first four games they were minus one in the turnover ratio. So not nearly the advantage from last year to this year as it was for Tim Brewster's team. That's right. They had only taken the ball away seven times coming into the ball game today. They were fifth in the in the Big Ten in that category. Draw play to Eskridge. And he picks up about five yards. O'Brien Schofield on the tackle for Wisconsin. So a big third down. Not nearly in field goal range yet for Minnesota. So here's a chance for Wisconsin to maybe get off the field. And again, it depends on how aggressive you want to be. As a play caller on the defensive side of the ball, you want to be aggressive, but you got to understand where number seven is Decker on the offensive side and make sure you provide help because they've proven already that he's a tough matchup for anybody one on one. And Weber dumps one in no man's land almost intercepted it might be intercepted it is a deflected ball off the fingertips of Eskridge ends up as a pick for Wisconsin Patrick Bertram comes up with the loose ball Blake Sorensen does a good job of hugging up the screen Weber has to help his running back out and throw it at the feet. Watch Blake Sorensen, number nine, hug up on Eskridge. A great job of adjusting by Buttram to come in and make the catch as a defensive lineman showing some hands. But again, Weber's got to make that decision, Bob, right? If it's not there, dump it at his feet. I know, and then you just can't, offensively, you just can't do that. Earlier in the game, Minnesota was on the one yard line and only got a field goal because they had a 10 yard chop block penalty. Colzine to the ground with play. 
Cuts back and picks up six yards. What an amazing turn again in the momentum as Tolzien gave the ball away to Minnesota. But Buttram's deflected ball interception takes it back for Wisconsin as we trade turnovers to start here in the third quarter. Both teams have two turnovers. And again, you just you just can't you just can't move and score points and touchdowns and field goals if you get the ball up. You just can't do it. Play busts one. Stays on his feet all the way out to midfield. Play again. Makes another tackle and picks up nearly 11 more yards. Another first down for the Badgers. It's a good job by Paul Chris creating uh, a situation where they have the Minnesota defenders outflanked. They're running away from the on block player. And you're going to see that the Wisconsin Badgers have a hat on a hat. They got a blocker on a blocker. And when you're that big and strong, it's tough to defeat the blocker and get a solid hit on a guy like John Clay. And actually, Lee Campbell does a great job of getting him down because if he doesn't get him down, he's to the safeties. Not much there that time for Monty Ball as he is brought down. He may have lost a yard. Nate Triplett came through to make the stop. Take a look at the play right over the center. It's Kahn's, the redshirt freshman. We're talking about those two defensive linemen in there, Brown and Small, the controlling the inside of that offensive defensive line. Those two defensive tackles are two of the best in the conference. Tolzien fires one over the middle behind Nick Toon. A triplet had dropped back deep into the middle of the field and had a chance at another interception. Well, he, uh, you're right, uh, Bob, that he did get his depth, and that depth allowed him to take away the dig. That's part of understanding routes and understanding the sticks and where they are. And the depth helped him get a tip on that because that was on target, and his fingertips knocked the ball away from Toon. Third down and 11. The come. Gophers bring the blitz. Tolzien flips it middle, and he's got a man. All the way down inside the 25 to about the 23-yard line goes Garrett Graham on the tight end screen. I like the call. You got a blitz coming. You got a third and 11 situation. Your quarterback has thrown an interception, and he's fumbled one away. He, so he's not feeling real confident, but he threw a nice, safe screen pass against the blitz, and you pick up a first down. That is huge for Wisconsin. I'm going to say Paul Christ read Kevin Cosgrove's mail. Well, that's, I think he was planning on the blitz. That's yeah. why he ran the screen. It's a great play. To the ground and John Clay. He has the edge at the 10, tripped up inside the 5. Kim Royston came over and saved the touchdown, but it's first and goal Badgers at the three. I'm going back to it. This is where Minnesota now has to make the adjustment. They're running the weak side counter OT of the old Redskins. Guard tackle around or guard tight end around, and they're getting a hat on a hat. Anytime you can get a hat on a hat as an offense, that means you're outflanking the defense. That ball has to be turned in inside by the furthermost outside player. If not, they're going to run it all day, and you're not going to stop it. Here it comes again. Play right up the middle. He is popped but gets to the one yard line. Triplet came up to make the stop again for Minnesota. And Bob, I'm telling you, if he stays outside, he's, he's in the paint. He, he just ran straight up the middle, but yeah. they are outflanked every time on that particular play. Well, they certainly had enough defensive players inside on that yeah. one. John Clay with just about double the yardage that he had in the first half already here in the second half. Keeps his legs moving and gets in. Broke a tackle of Lee Campbell in the backfield and found a way to score. And Wisconsin takes the lead back. That's what 250 will do for you. 250 LBs. 
Second right. rushing touchdown for John Clay. You guys were right. Campbell hit him in the backfield. He just ran right through it because he had just as big as Campbell was. He was bigger than the linebacker. Six rushing touchdowns in the first five games of the season for John Clay. The extra point tacked on by Welch. And it's a four point lead for Wisconsin. That's 250 pounds of Clay coming. Right at that golden gopher defense. There's no play though. It's Clay. Both Wisconsin and Minnesota exchange turnovers here in the third quarter, but it's the Badgers that are able to take advantage and march down here at TCF Bank Stadium and retake the lead 17 to 13. In this rivalry game, Wisconsin has won the last five meetings in a row, so it's been a long time since Paul Bunyan's axe been carried around by Minnesota. Soudermeyer has been terrific returning kick so far today from the six. A burst up the sideline to the 30. And again, great field position for Minnesota after a great kickoff return by Troy Stoudemire. The trophy is inside that holder over on the Wisconsin bench. Who's going to carry it around? Here in the Big Ten. It's great field position for Minnesota. And Eskridge goes up the middle for about two yards, tripped up by Finellis. Minnesota is used to this good um, punt and kickoff return teams because their their kick their punt return team is number one in the Big Ten, and their kickoff return team is ranks third in the Big Ten. So. They've done a great job, not only with their return people, but also the scheme and all those blockers up front of him getting something done. Now they have to take advantage of their field position, which they failed to capitalize on a turnover the last series because of penalties. Nice play action fake by Weber. Just across midfield goes Eric Decker. About three yards shy of a first down. Third down and three. Four man rush. Weber well protected, under throws his receiver and almost throws it away as Javery McFadden had a chance at an interception. Well, you can see that coming the whole way. Well, it's Tampa 2, and, and the weakness of the coverage is the check down in the middle of the field, not to the outside where McFadden gets a great break on the football. Weber didn't exactly lean into that throw. Exactly. He needs to get it there quickly. If you, if you, you know, he went four or five yards just to pick up the first down. Get it there quick. An end over end kick. He'll reach. He'll try and return it. Breaks a tackle and has no help as he's brought down at the 15 yard line. Let's go. And Zach Brown now in a tailback. And he scoots out to about the 33 for a gain of four. Lee Campbell makes the stop again. But just to go back, I mean, we talk about adjustments. On third down, where they go? They go to the tight end because of the matchup problem against the linebacker. So now you got to almost think about, and Kevin Crossgrove said he would not do this, doubling a tight end. But you have to look to get help sometime in a key situation. You have to cover him with more than one linebacker. You know, if you can almost follow him, where is he? Right here now? Minnesota does a nice job to stretch out that play. John Clay is brought down by Simone Lawrence. Feels that way. Clay on third and one. Easily has the first down across the 45 to the 46 yard line. They motion to on balance. And as a defense, you have to then adjust your defense. You bring Kendricks up and over. You only have two players on the backside that can block. Well, you have three guys of Gophers on the backside. It doesn't make sense. So what you do is you adjust your defensive line one man over. You adjust your linebackers one man over. Then you don't get outflanked and get, I've been saying it all day, a hat on a hat. By unbalanced, you mean bringing one offensive lineman from the left over to the right side. And yeah, and you have everybody over there. The ball's going there. It is what it is. Nearly 100 rushing yards for Wisconsin in the third quarter. What a football weekend between Wisconsin and Minnesota. 
The Vikings call the Metrodome home. It used to be the home for the University of Minnesota. And a moment ago, the mascots went at it. And who was disguised taking away Paul Bunyan's axe from Bucky Badger? Well, Goldie Gopher. Big fan. <laughs> the Fox Big jersey. Fan. Get on that bandwagon, Goldie. Ride it. You want to hear a loud cheer when they ripped that jersey off. This place went nuts. Here it comes again. They're motioning with five, six blockers with the pulling guard. They don't have people to cover it. They run that way with Clay and pick up six more yards to start the fourth quarter. Let me show you this. They're going to bring six players. Watch. You're going to see Kendricks come over. Now watch the guard. Now what you have to do is adjust everybody over here instead of covering dirt out here. Take a look. Watch the pulling guard. See how many offensive blockers they have to that side? And they don't have enough defenders. So what you do is move your defense with the motion. And that's why offenses use motion. To surprise you or not let you not sit in it where you can see it. Clay busts a big one. All the way down inside the 25 to about the 22-yard line before Marcus Sherrill's brought him down. What's well, it's the same thing. It's two That's, pullers. It's Moffat 74 getting a good block. They go to a trap that time. This offensive line is uh, starting to get their timing down. That's why the offensive line moves them in so they don't, so the defense doesn't see it and, and make adjustments to it. Have to do it on the run. 135 yards already for the workhorse. And tack on a few more for John Clay. Here's another look. His head is up. Good. He hits him with his face mask. And that's a load. I mean, that's 248. Plus, you got those big linemen pushing on top of you. And what he got a stinger. I mean, I saw the doctors down there when they're when they're pushing on your head. They're not checking your shoulder. They're checking to see if you get any burn down that left arm. That's Keenan Cooper, a red shirt freshman from Dallas in for Nate Triplett. Play again. Breaks a tackle. That looks like Wisconsin football, doesn't it? Down to about the 12-yard line. You know, Chris, for the most part, when they motion a man across and they run the ball, it's always going to be behind the guy that's motioning to that side. I mean, it's almost every time if guy comes across the formation, motions to the right, they're going to run it to the right because they get the extra blocker over there yep. that you were talking about. Or, or what they'll do is they'll bring him back as an extra puller when they decide to bring two. So they either run in there. In other words, follow that guy that's in motion because yep. that's where the ball's at. Exactly. Huge play here. Minnesota desperate for a stop on third and one. Clay picks up the first down and then some. All the way down inside the five-yard line, still on his feet. First and goal, Wisconsin. That time the motion man went to the left, the ball was run to the left. John Clay has clearly established himself as the back. And again, when you're able to get your shoulders downhill at 248 pounds, and keep those legs moving. What that does, guys, is that fires up your offensive line. When they see you running over, folks, they want to get going. Run the ball, run the ball. That's what they scream in the huddle. Run the ball. Eight straight running plays. Sets them up first and goal at the five. Play again. The ninth straight run. And this time he's turned back. Maybe picked up half a yard. Kyle Therrett came up. This is the top offense in the nation inside the 20. Coming into the game, they were 16 of 16. In our rule held true, Bob, Kendricks went across the motion, became a pooler, and that's where the ball goes. Yep. Derek Brown. Zach, Zach Brown in a tailback now. Play on the sideline, second and goal at the five. Tolzien to throw. Enzo. Wide open. Touchdown. Kendricks does a super job to get his foot down just inside the chalk in the back of the end zone. While he's open, two guys jumped Garrett Graham with Kendricks coming behind Garrett Graham. And when you have a productive tight end like Garrett Graham, here's Graham. Now watch two guys jump him. See the safety jump up right there? You have two guys jumping him. And right there is Kendricks making the catch. So Wisconsin opens up a two-score lead. 
Kendricks does a nice job. First catch of the day makes a nice reception and a nice toe tap in the end zone. What a drive it was for the Badgers. Nine straight running plays, finally setting up the touchdown pass to Lance Kendricks. Well, since 1948, Wisconsin and Minnesota have played for Paul Bunyan's axe. But prior to 1948, the series was played for, for a chubby guy like me, love the idea of playing for the slab of bacon trophy. They never should have changed that. <laughs> they don't get that confused with the Florida Rosedale, do they? <laughs> They lost the slab of bacon for a while, and that's why the axe replaced it. This time, it's Jay Thomas bringing it out to about the 17-yard line. Terrible field position for Minnesota. Rare for them after a kickoff today. Eskridge makes a tackle and picks up about five yards. And let's flash back to 2003 at the end of the third quarter between Wisconsin and Minnesota. Jim Sorge finds Darren Charles for a touchdown, tying a thriller at 27. Early in the fourth quarter, Marion Barber, an 11-yard score. Time running down, game tied at 34. Reese Lloyd makes the 34-yarder, and he knows what to do if you win this game. And that's the last time Minnesota won it. You jump right onto the other team's bench and find that ax. Well, it's inside the carrier on the Wisconsin sideline, and right now it looks like the Badgers are in prime position to maintain possession of the ax. Up two scores. Play action for Weber. Fires across his body, and boy, Troy Stoudemire is dislodged from the football by Jay Valai. Unveiling the axe, taking it out of the bag. They find that in an SID's office, Bob? <laughs> That's where they found the slab of bacon. <laughs> the slab of bacon trophy was a piece of black walnut wood that was the trophy from 1930 through 1948, but in the mid-40s it disappeared. And in 1994, about 50 years after it disappeared, it showed up in a storage room in Wisconsin's SID's office. Uh -huh. Who knows how it ended up there. Weber tries to escape the rush. Buying time. Still scrambling. And eventually takes the sack inside the five-yard line. Was that a coverage sack? No, he just, you know, Weber is, 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 a, is, a, is a good quarterback. He can throw the football. He's been, he's been a starter for three years. He'll be making his 30th start today. But Chris, he's got to have a, 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 a clock in his mind that says, this is all the time you have. I do not want to take a sack. Just get rid of the ball and come back and play another day. Don't take a huge sack. Exactly. Good coverage by Wisconsin. Everybody was covered downfield. Pretty good punt from Howden. And a fair catch called for by Gilreath at his own 47 yard line. An 11 point lead for Wisconsin. They have won Paul Bunyan's axe in this rivalry the last five years in a row. It's been a long time since it filled that trophy case here at Minnesota. Well, they got, they got nine guys up there. There it is. Tolzien. To the sideline. Nice catch down the sideline by Kendricks. And what a beautiful floating throw from Tolzien off the play action fake. Actually, it's not bad coverage by Royston, but they have it all what they want. I mean, you run the ball, run the ball, you have to commit to stopping the run, and there's the matchup problem with tight ends against safeties. You can't match up. And when you have a quarterback that drops it in the trash can from 50 yards, that's, it's tough to stop. That's just a great throw. Uh, Scott Tolzien has been up and down in this game. He has hit some really nice throws, and that was one of them. Tolzien pumps once. Again looking for Kendricks. This time overthrows him. It'll be second down and 10. This is not the first time in the last two years that Minnesota had a lead at halftime. Last year they had a two touchdown lead over Brett Bielema's Badgers. But Tim Brewster's Gophers couldn't hold on, lost the game 35 to 32. A field goal lead at halftime today, but it has been all Wisconsin here in the second half. It's been John Clay. Ever since John put the ball on the deck against Walford three times, 
He's become a new man, running with purpose and vengeance. Here he is again. Down to the 15-yard line for a gain of five. So that will take Clay up to 165 yards rushing with two touchdowns. He had 142 yards last week against Michigan State. It's his third 100-yard rushing game this season. And he came into today second in the Big Ten, averaging about 99 and a half yards per game. This puts him well over 100 yards per game on average. Not bad for a non-starter, is it, Greece? Getting better and better and better. Wisconsin's getting better. And, uh, you know, as they move along in this, uh, in, the, in the conference, they're going to get tougher and tougher. Draw play. Zach Brown. Spinning down. Lost the football. They rule it a fumble, and it's picked up by Minnesota. No one's going to catch Marcus Sherrill's. Touchdown. Last week, Zach Brown put the ball on the deck. This week, Zach Brown put the ball on the deck. You see Zach pointing. I was down. I was down. Let's take a look. Oh, well, Zach, no, you weren't. It's been a problem for Minnesota, for Wisconsin, not only this year, but last year. They fumbled 10 times this year and has lost it seven of those 10 times. Now Minnesota going to go for two here to try and cut it to a three point lead obviously with 650 to go an 88 yard touchdown return by Marcus Sherrill's off the fumble by Zach Brown and this to make it a field goal game. They work on these two point plays all the time. There is Decker. Into the end zone and the two point conversion is caught. Dejan McKnight with his first catch of the day. And it's a field goal difference with 6.50 to go. Decker, Decker was the decoy. McKnight, who caught his first pass of the year, was the two-point receptor. I'll talk about a crazy game as well between these two teams. How about... In 2005, Wisconsin and Minnesota, 30 seconds to go in the game. The Badgers block a punt and recover for a touchdown. Wisconsin would hoist the ax. Oh, he fumbled it. It's blocked, unbelievably. Touchdown, Badgers. Unbelievable. Simply shocking. These two teams play some crazy games, and who knows if we might have a similar finish today. We got one. I like the call on a two-point play. You were pointing out, Greece, they used Decker. They stepped him across the line of scrimmage. That draws the defender to give McKnight room to work without any interference from a second defender sitting in the end zone, ready to help on the slant. Yep. He'll bring back deep to receive. A short kick from the 12. He'll bring it out. Popped at the 26-yard line. <laughs> Now there's the workhorse, John Clay, and this time tougher sledding, picks up two yards. Well, we talk about forcing the ball back inside. That time, Thera to safety comes up, selling out on the run, knocks off the puller, and forces Clay back to the pursuit of the defense. Zach Brown's fumble on the last possession for Wisconsin results in an 88-yard touchdown return by Marcus Sherrills to make it following the two-point conversion, a three-point game. Tolzien to throw. Finds Isaac Anderson, stays on his feet, lost his helmet, and did well to hold on to the football and I think pick up a first down. Wisconsin people would rather lose his helmet than lose the ball. Eric Small hustling from his defensive tackle position is going to run down here and make a play. Watch Big Eric come. There you go with the Ooh. forearm and shoulder. That's a defensive tackle from right over the center getting out there to make that hit. It's an excellent effort. That's what Eric Small brings to the table. 
Catch was good for a first down, though, so it's a fresh set of downs. He's the fumble. Remember, he caused the fumble on Zach Brown. Play action for Tolzien on first down. Sidesteps the rush. Throws a dangerous pass. High and wide of Garrett Graham. Okay, you got to be careful with the football if you're Scott Tolzien. When you hand it off to your runners, you want to want them want them to hold on to it. And if you're throwing it, you got to be just make sure that 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 you complete it or it goes incomplete. Because what those guys in the secondary are doing is they're going to take some chances. They're going to take a, a little bit of a gamble to make a big play. Three wide receivers and play the lone setback. He gets the call on second and ten. Nice cutback. Stays on his feet and I think has another first down. Triplet brought him down. That's an 11 yard gain. Now, Triplet might have hurt his knee. Well, you can't say enough about this offensive line from Wisconsin and how they've run blocked today. Remember, a young group finally getting healthy and getting together and doing an outstanding job of winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. And now it's the true freshman, Monty Ball, in a tailback. And right into the teeth of that Golden Gopher defense for a yard. All right, Reese, it was a short rest for John Clay. Monty Ball out, Clay back in. 177 yards rushing for John Clay. Play action. Tolzien on a bootleg, and he has plenty of running room down the sideline. Tolzien cuts it back. Inside the 20. Down at the six yard line. That was a great call by Paul Christ, the offensive coordinator. It's just a naked bootleg. Nobody is out there. It's a run the whole way. <laughs> He's waiting for Karimi, the left tackle, to get out of his way. That's a huge play. Well, it's set up because you're able to run the football consistently. They brought Kendricks in motion. He just kept the ball with the lead blocker. Play on first and goal. At the goal line. Brought down just shot. Wisconsin thinks it's a touchdown. He is marked down, boy, at the one inch line. Watch where the ball is. This is a good solid hit coming in from Royston, who knocks the ball. It's the ball has to cross the plane. And you see that ball gets knocked sideways in front of the goal line, Grease. He gets flipped around. Nothing's on the ground. Tough to tell. I think it's a touchdown. I think this ball goes across the white line. I don't As think it comes does. down. I think he's right on the white line. I think it's on the line, and the head linesman at the far side couldn't see it. Second and goal. The handoff to Clay. Well, they didn't have to wait long to make sure. What a game it's been for John Clay, and what a second half for the Wisconsin rush attack. And they bail out Zach Brown who can now breathe a sigh of relief as they make it a two score game again with three minutes to go. Very impressive drive for Wisconsin. They've had trouble with fumbling. Uh, like I said last year they were they had 19 lost fumbles. A hundred and eighty two yards and three touchdowns for John Clay. He might be moving up the Doak Walker watch list pretty quickly. I, I mean, I've been on the bad side of that, where teams running on me and I'm on the defense, and I see those offensive linemen, they get excited for a five-yard gain. It's like a it's, it's like a big play for them. It's like an interception on defense. And that ball carries deep past Stoudemire. Clay with 157 yards rushing in the second half. And of course, now we're at the time of the game where first downs will stop the clock. So. Clock management a little bit easier in college than it might be in the pros in this instance. Play action for Weber. Well protected. Looking for the home run ball for Decker. He's got it. If you're going to pull off the miracle comeback, you need a quick strike, and this is what they get with Eric Decker. The last week. Last week against Michigan State, Wisconsin let a guy go straight down the field. And this is another guy going straight up the field in a long pass completion against that secondary. Up the scene, 
Tao Arnett. All the way down to the two yard line. Well, Same they, thing as last week against Michigan State, straight up the field. The problem they have is Maragos is out, way outside in the cover two, helping with Decker, which leaves the middle of the field vacant for Tao Arnett. Good recognition by Adam Weber, not to force it to Decker, but look where the weakness of the defense is in attack. Hand off to Bennett into the end zone for the touchdown. DeJuan Bennett goes over from a yard out. And with 2.13 to go, this game is so far from over. <laughs> Big Eric Small put him in there at fullback. He's been hitting fools all over the place today. Lee Blocker. 80 yards in 47 seconds. How do you figure that? They haven't done anything the whole after second half, and then when they have to have it, they take it right down and do it. Well, Greece, think about it this way. The only two things that Wisconsin could possibly have done in the second half and Chris to lose this game is to either turn it over, and they do so, giving Minnesota a free touchdown and a long run, or give up huge chunk plays and not even eat up time, which they do on that last possession. With 2.13 to go and two timeouts, is this an automatic onside kick? I would think it would have to be. Well, if I'm Wisconsin, I have my my uh, good hands team up there for sure. You see the kicker lining up in position. So yes, it's an automatic onside kick. You see how that ball is tilted. The laces are pointed right toward the Gopher sideline. And these teams work on this all the time. Every day in practice, they have a they have a, a period that for special teams, and they work on all this stuff both offensively and defensively, I mean, receiving and kicking the ball. It's loose. And Wisconsin comes up with it. Great hands by Nick Toon. Decker had a shot at it. See Decker there, got a hand on it. Right there. Toon. Aware, not quitting on the play. Well, they've got good hands in that family as we take a look at winging it, brought to you by Wing Street. And a great afternoon for Scott Tolzien. And a great afternoon in the second half for John Clay in the rush attack. Clay brought down, lost a yard, maybe a yard and a half. And a quick timeout called by Minnesota. Well, rivalry games a lot of times produce crazy endings, and we've had about as crazy a fourth quarter as we ever could have imagined. Did you call me Brian Greasy? <laughs> did I? <laughs> well, quarterbacks, did. it doesn't matter, man. I think he did. I'm just a lot better looking than the Well, huh? you know, you sound alike, you look alike. Maybe you should consider that a compliment. <laughs> I didn't hear your question after that. <laughs> as crazy as the fourth quarter yeah. has been, you've had to muddle through with a substandard play-by-play -play guy, but at least we got a good game. We, we got a great game, and uh, um, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with the way both teams have come back. You know, you, you have to be able to do that. Play up the middle, picks up two, so it'll be third down and eight with 2.03 to go. And Minnesota will use their last timeout. To me, this sets up a very interesting play call. It's third down and eight. Do you run the ball, take as much time off the clock as possible? If you throw it and pick up a first down, the game's over. I run the football. I run the football, use as much clock as possible, and put the hands in your defense. And that's what you have to do. I think you play the percentages in this situation. Just by the history of this series and this rivalry, run the football, use the clock, and say, defense, go win it. But Minnesota still has a chance, down by only three, if they can hold here. Wisconsin. A far cry from field goal range. They'll throw it. Down the sideline looking for the big play to Kendricks. Knocked away. So that keeps a lot of time on the clock with 1.56 to go. Marcus Sherrill's there in coverage. Well, he was an impact player. 
And that's the reason he's a senior. He's been around a while. Not fooled by the semi roll of Tolzien. Great position and goes up and battles the much taller Kendricks, Kendricks to knock it away. Kendricks is 6'4, Sherrills is 5'11. And they took a shot down the field. If it was picked off, it would be as good as a punt. Brad Nortman, the sophomore punter, will try and kill it as deep as he can and almost has it blocked. It, it may have been partially tipped. And it takes a great Badger roll. A tipped ball that's going to roll inside almost the five yard line. Wow. Tell you what, the special teams for Minnesota are very impressive. All the return teams are good. See if he gets a piece of it. He did a nice job of getting a little piece of that ball without hitting the punter. Oh boy. First of all, it's a bad snap that takes the punter right into the rush lane. And Cooper does a good job of avoiding contact first and foremost and getting the tip ball. He came right up, right up the center. The legends are made right here. The Axe game. New stadium. Students. The Golden Gophers comebacks. have had a couple of comeback wins this season at their own five yard line. No timeouts. 143 to go. All you need is a field goal to tie. Down the sideline for Decker. Knocked away. And boy, Decker did well to fight Niles Brinkley for the football. Yeah, good he, point. he turned into a defensive back on that play. Good point, Shu. Excellent. And that's and that's what a good receiver should do. Protect your quarterback. This is why the quarterbacks have confidence in putting this ball up to Decker because. They won't let he won't let the defensive back get the ball in an interception. Eric Decker at the bottom of your screen stays in the game. He's got seven catches for 122 yards. Second down and 10. Weber looks downfield for Stoudemire. He's behind the defense and almost comes up with the ball at the 50 yard line. I think Bob I think right there Weber might need to recognize and pick up the first down with your feet just to get something going you're forcing it into coverage and Maricos has got to be careful in this situation number one rule for defensive back deep as the deepest he jumped underneath and Stoudemire almost came up with the play you better be sure if you're jumping the one thing here that Wisconsin defensively knows is that Weber is not a good runner or a scrambler he does not Across the line of scrimmage, even though he ran the ball a lot last year, that was out of design, not out of a scramble. Third and ten. Stoudemire makes the catch up the sideline, makes a move, needs to get out of bounds and does. First down out across the 20 to the 22 yard line. That's just a great play by Stoudemire. He didn't have the first down originally, shook off the defender, got up the sideline, got the first down, and got out of bounds to stop the clock temporarily until the ball is placed. And a play is the signal is given. The clock will stop on made first downs. No timeouts left for Minnesota, but still a minute 20 to go. Two defenders on Decker down here. Weber can't take a sack here. Not an option, and he goes down. And that is going to kill Minnesota in terms of time on the clock. In the NFL, in a quarterback sack inside of two minutes, the clock stops. Not in college. The clock keeps running on the sack. A minute to go. Here comes the blitz, five-man rush. Weber's flipping one into no man's land as he avoids going down, and he's going to lose the down anyway. That's going to be intentional grounding. Intentionally grounding is fun. Number eight on the offense. Threw the ball away, no one receiver in the area. That's a fresh ball. Lost the down. Chris Borland putting the pressure on Centerville, Ohio. Third and 16. There's Borland up top right here. The guy that brings speed off the corner. Borden just about gets to Weber and deflects the pass on its way out. He can't handle him up there. <laughs> he is something else. Wills can't handle him. Now he, he jumped inside. He put him with a quick spin move. And it's tough duty on Wills when Borland has his ears pinned back. Take a look. There's a quick little spin move. And when you have speed on that edge, it puts a lot of fear in offensive linemen. 
He took a risk by coming inside, giving it that corner, though. It but it paid like, off. Yeah, it looked like they were going to roll him out, too. Down to this for Minnesota, fourth and 16. Again, getting through his Borland. Great catch, though, made for a first down. Eric Decker from Adam Weber. Wow. Football player. Pure and simple, folks. Wow. New life for the Golden Gophers. They have to get set 42 seconds to go. Again, Wisconsin brings five. Again, the pressure is there, and the ball pops out. Still loose, and this time it's recovered by Borland. From a fourth and 16 conversion to a fumble on the ensuing play. And the Badgers, for the sixth consecutive year, are going to walk around with Paul Bunyan's axe. We earned it, Colzine takes one knee and that'll do it. And Wisconsin celebrates six straight years with the axe of, as they beat Minnesota again. Well, guys, normally you get some wild finishes in this rivalry and this again didn't disappoint didn't disappoint at all there was a little sloppy at the end but it was an exciting game 31 28 wisconsin has the axe and the win once again for bob gracie chris spielman and our entire espn crew i'm bob Schusen. this has been a presentation of espn the worldwide leader in sports wisconsin stays unbeaten at five and oh ESPN College Football Scoreboard is coming up next. So long from Minneapolis.